YouTube, it's Brian Phillips again, mini apprentice. I've been promising this for a while and finally the time has come. We're gonna fly this thing for you guys that are just trying to learn how to fly. <clears throat> the Sport Cub S is a great choice. This is another great choice. Look how dead calm it is too. This is crazy. Okay, so throttle cuts off. Here goes nothing. We're gonna go ahead and try to taxi out to the runway. <clears throat> Doesn't turn super sharp, which is not unexpected. Okay. Sorry, I can't handle it anymore. Okay, so I'm flying in experience mode right now. Oh, excuse me, I'm in safe. So you notice it's kind of going up uphill a lot. This is, this is okay, but you see what's going on? It's going way up, okay? So I need to trim it down, but I wanna trim it in experienced mode, okay? Yeah, I just need a little trim on the elevator, that's all. You can hold the trim button. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm just pushing down on that butt, or I'm pushing, pushing up on it, which pushes down on the elevator. Okay? So I'm in safe now. And so the plane is basically flying itself in a straight line, keeping itself level. <clears throat> that thing is so slow, it's glorious. Accidental landings are my favorite. So it's gonna pitch up for you when you give it throttle in beginner mode. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the limited bank angles in beginner. So that's all the way down, are you kidding? So that's the limited bank angles. That's as far as you can point it to the left. And that's as far as you can point it to the right, okay? So I'm holding the stick all the way. And then I'm gonna show you over the power lines here. That's as far as you can point it down. <laughs> that's, that's, I couldn't see how that could possibly get away from you. Okay, I'm in experience mode now. Just to show you that this plane will do it all. It will basically do it all. A little bit sluggish on the roll response, but that's okay. It's a trainer. It will fly upside down. It will do all the fun tricks that you see people doing. And then you can also hit that button. I'm gonna show you panic. I'll get you into some crazy maneuvers here. Okay, so let's say you're totally confused and you're disoriented. You can hold panic and it's gonna turn you over. Just remember if you're out of safe, when you let some time pass, it's going to come out of the panic mode. I'm really having to hold down the elevator to keep it from flying up. <laughs> We're gonna have to mechanically trim that elevator. But man, it flies good. Let's go in the bowl. Look at that gorgeous plane. Why are you so far away from me? That is true, I do. This is just about 30 to 40% throttle right here. Very easy to fly, very controllable. Whoa, look at all that hay there. Full throttle, not quite unlimited vertical, but we got plenty of power to do what we're doing here. Going over the sunset and then down. Okay, into basic again. So just remember, if you're in basic mode and you're flying toward trees, you may wanna not continue doing that because you'll run into them. This thing doesn't know where trees are. It doesn't know where houses or buildings are, people. It just knows what level is. That's all it knows. Sorry about the sun, folks. <clears throat> In 
if you want it to look really good when you make your turns, you want to coordinate your turns. So you're going to mix in a little bit of rudder with your aileron. And then you're going to pull back on the stick, on your elevator stick, to make it pull the nose up. And that's how you make those turns look nice. This is in experience mode. Even in experience mode, this thing flies really easy because it's light and it's got a very thick wing. So it produces a ton of lift. Feels like it's gonna fly forever too. Let's go over here, let's show them in the backyard. Oh, so cool. Gonna do a low pass here. See if I can get a stall turn out of it. Yay. Okay, so let's shoot some landings here. Okay, so in safe. So this is the beginner mode. I'm just gonna run it in toward the landing strip. And then I'm just gonna shut the throttle off and pull back on the stick. I'm just pulling back on the stick. Okay, grass isn't gonna hurt it. In fact, I'll take off from here to show you. Pull back on the elevator when you're in the grass. You're gonna do a little grass cutting. There you go. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, out of safe, just so I can really crank it around. <clears throat> in between us and the building there, huh? Flying in tight quarters is not as easy as it looks, folks. If you're just learning to fly, make sure you got a lot of room. This is a pretty decent sized front yard. It's about, what, two and a half acres? Mm -hmm. The trees compose about 3.6 acres. The rear back open spot is about three and a half acres. And then there's a little bit more worth of trees in the back. Or that's actually part of the 3.6 acres of trees. Is there enough power for an inside loop? Not really. So as you get better flying, you can do all sorts of fun things. And if you get lost or just hold that panic button and it's gonna basically do what you want it to, but just remember, it'll fly into stuff like your camera crew if you're not careful. So be careful. So we're gonna go into safe and do another safe landing. Hey, hon, do you wanna fly? Uh, nope. Come on, really? You know that's the first thing everybody's gonna ask. I know, I know. I mean, every time I try it, you end up crashing immediately. Oh, we're not here to prove that the plane can be crashed. Well, that's not the point. I just think that you, you could do it. It's I so It's so easy to fly. My brain does not think that way. Even after listening to you all this time. You mean just nope. today? Okay, so we're still in safe, so I'm just kind of just kind of giving it some encouragement on what direction I'd like it to go. Cut the throttle a little bit and it'll take that nose down for you. As you can see, when I let go, it just levels out. That's safe, okay? I wonder what happens when I turn off the radio. You don't want me to try that? Or are you afraid it's gonna be destroyed? I've flown some planes with a little bit more power before. But it'll it'll get up there. Very easy to fly, guys. Very easy to fly. You want to try shooting some angles from the other side of the drive there, camera crew? Yeah, can you walk over there? Yeah. Panic. So now just to be clear, panic mode is a little bit more aggressive than just going into safe. So there's panic and when you let go, it does not, it does not let go of the panic for a few seconds. So watch this, okay? So panic, when you've let go, it keeps doing it. 
Okay, so you need to be aware of that. Oh, we gotta go around the moon. Around the moon, loop. Did I get the moon? Mm -hmm. Good, okay. Always gotta shoot the moon if you can. Man, this thing flies good, guys. Can you do a couple landings from over here? So if you do, if you... Oh, you mean... Then when you are in the sun. When you're, you're not talking about from this side. You're talking about from just, just... From me standing over here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do it in experience if I can get it to land. That was a touch and go. So we're gonna go up here, go into safe. I'm using up ground guys, cause this thing just wants to keep flying. Okay, that was another touch and go. I could have stopped, but I just wanted to take off. Flying under power lines and stuff like that is usually kind of a no-no. If you're new to flying, don't try it. Wait till you have a few years of experience and some insurance, good insurance. Okay, chopping the throttle, forcing the nose down a little bit. That was all safe. Man, that thing just won't stay down when you give a throttle like that. Okay, an experience now. So now there's no flaps on this plane. Flaps are an inboard looking aileron. So that means it's closer to the body of the airplane or the fuselage. And they come down together, both left and right, and they produce extra drag and they reduce the stall speed of the plane. They also change, they change the direction that the nose of the aircraft is pointed, which is uh, described by attitude. So the attitude of the airplane. And it makes it really fun because you can slow the plane down to a creep and not fall out of the sky. But look how slow that is. I came off the ground. The wind is going with us right now. So as you get more experience with flying, you learn to kind of use up the energy of the plane in different creative ways. And so one of the ways you can do it if you're a more experienced pilot is you can use the rudder instead of a flaps, you can use the rudder to slip the plane. And a slip is where you, you point the plane and you use the rudder and the ailerons to counter each other. You see how that was? See, I'm slipping right now. So it almost looks like you're trying to knife edge from this angle. So we'll slip the other way. You see how it's slipping? So what that'll do is it'll bleed off energy. See how it's slipping? And like that time, I bled off too much energy. Oh, that guy's way up there, okay. Yeah. You always yield demand aircraft. So if you hear an aircraft, find out where it is and yield to it. If you hear it very loud, then you waited too long. Remember guys, when you fly airplanes, even toys, you're responsible for what happens with that airplane. So be careful. Don't hurt yourself, but definitely don't hurt somebody else. Nice. I love shooting landings and takeoffs with this plane and it's big brother, the Apprentice STS, which is a 1.5 meter as opposed to 1.2 this meter or 1.2 meter that was weird did you see that <laughs> see see how forgiving that is i missed the runway by about two feet i've been neat i've been meaning to mow that spot oh you want me to do that wait didn't i oh i took off from the grass that's true okay Okay, so where do you want me to land? Because you're kind of in my landing strip. Well, where do you mean to go? Just come onto the driveway. I'll come around. It's okay. 
So I'm gonna keep my altitude low so there's less energy to bleed off. The grass is tall here. I don't wanna get stuck in it. You see how it's short there? Okay. That's where I'm gonna go. Okay. See this little narrow spot right there? Mm -hmm. That's all, it's one mower width from the zero turn. Oh, I'll get it. So it does just fine landing in the grass. And this the, is not short or like super. No, this is pretty thick stuff. So the other way you can you can launch is if you don't have, okay, now be careful because you're gonna have this live in your hand. This is called a hand launch, okay? So to hand launch a plane, there's a couple of different trains of thought. One with safe, make sure you're in safe and then just throw it, okay? Then it's out of your hand then give it throttle. Okay, that's a hand launch. Okay, I'm gonna land in the grass again there, hon. Okay. This is a safe landing. Nice, easy landing. You see how the wings kind of help protect your prop? Then the other train of thought is to do a powered hand launch. Okay, that's where you throttle it up and just kind of let it take off. With enough power, you can do that with no problem. But just keep in mind, this plane is extremely forgiving. I just love flying it. Are you serious you won't try this? For even for your wonderful audience that's always saying really nice things to you about how good of a job you do filming? Because I do a good job filming, not flying. But you would be able to fly this. If this channel was... Oh no! Your camera crew. No, I didn't crash on purpose, but I wanted to show the people that it will survive. So what happens if you crash? The first thing is you shop your throttle. My throttle cuts on and tested, okay? Secondly, you clean the schmutz out of the nose. Thirdly, you straighten the wing, look it over. Fourthly, test your motor, test your control surfaces and fly it. As you can see, zero damage. Did you like how I worked that in, hon? You know, everybody always wants a good torture test on stuff they're buying online. By the way, I haven't mentioned that yet. If you want this plane, buy it online right now. Follow the link I have in my video. You'll help support our channel with a small financial contribution. You don't pay it, Horizon does. <laughs> and then, you can also use a coupon because it's on sale right now. If you're watching this in more than a month, I'm sorry, it's probably not. So hopefully you bought it when it was on sale. What a great little plane. See, this plane is fun to fly. Sometimes you get planes that are really easy to fly and then they're just not very fun to fly if you know what you're doing. This plane is fun to fly. Okay, let's land it right now. Let's land it right in front of us here. See if I can get the mains to touch right where we are. Nope. Panic. Did you hear that uh, bird taunting me? Oh, it was. What do, you do you, what do you think of this plane? We've been flying it forever. No, vo no low voltage warning yet. Did it even have a time listed in the book? No, it's gotta be like 15 minutes. Just long enough to get your confidence up so you think you're ready for a, a Viper jet. So guys, this channel has been around for about Five and a half, six years, right? Or six years? No, less than that. Five years? Yeah. And we've been very fortunate to have a really great group of people that follow us and watch our videos. Even though we cover a wide variety of different aircraft. And we do landings like that still. Mm -hmm. But the idea is, if you're wanting to learn to fly, there's never a better time than now. I mean, seriously, there isn't. 
because in five years, you could be flying a lot better than me if you have the time and inclination to do it. I fly a lot. That is the difference between me and most. And in five years, I've been able to learn to do a lot of things in RC flying that other people don't end up spending enough effort to do. And then other people have far surpassed my skills. And if you find one flying type you like and you stick to it, you'll be very good at it. If you wanna to learn to fly, get a plane like this or the Sport Cub S UMX. It's a little cheaper to get into that. I'll link to both of them in the video description. Fly it so much that it's broken so many times that you can't look at its ugliness anymore. And then buy another one. And put it in your basement and keep it forever. Yes. I still have the Super Cub in the basement. I know. I still have motors to replace in that Super Cub. <laughs> <laughs> so in case you need an extra project to do. Yeah, because, I mean, that's, if I had free time, that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to show them what the low voltage warning looks like, but I mean, it just doesn't want to stop. This plane flies really good. What are you doing? I'm trying to keep it really low. Oh, Ooh, that's the low voltage. Oh, everybody died. That was my low voltage warning. Look at that beautiful sunset. Okay, I'll be right back. Yeah, oh well, no, I would just probably pause it. Did you? So, everything looks good here. No damage, obviously. And once your low voltage warning kicks in, the low voltage cutoff is gonna stop you from using the throttle. Whoops, I lied. My throttle cut was on. That's what low voltage cutoff looks like. Throttle cut is on. Don't forget to turn that on. Do you have your battery checker out here? Yes, I do. See what low voltage I actually do. Is. You mean how they defined it? Yeah. I'm going to put this to expert mode so the ailerons are straight when we park it. Look at those bugs. Look at this right here. Oh, <laughs> that was ridiculous. It was like. Yeah. What? Done with you what? Said, yeah, first. I'm going to that. My wonderful camera crew. It's okay, they can't hear my snarky comments now. Whatever. They still can. Just not when I'm walked away from you and you're yelling them. <laughs> oh man. Did you see how ridiculous that was? That was why I never adopted the EC3. Lucky for you guys, they've switched to an IC3, which is their new smart leads. And the smart leads have an extra pin in the middle right there, but they're compatible with the old ECs. Okay, so that's at 9.96 nominal. That means all of them put together. And the balance is, oh my goodness, <laughs> 2 .8. Wow, that's really low. Yeah. Okay, so normally you would not want to get that far out of balance. So I think we're going to charge this one. Normally you want to leave them about 3.8 volts. The lithium polymer cells are the most stable at that voltage. That's what I've been told. The chemistry just stays put longer. So without further ado, we'll also have links to this. This is in the smart accessories down below. I love flying these planes. I love teaching you guys that are new to the hobby, how to get into the hobby, how to enjoy the hobby, what planes are fun, what planes are garbage, which you can tell from my videos. Um, this is definitely a good plane. It is a lot more money than the Sport Cub SUMX, okay? But it's a lot more plane, and it's gonna give you a more fulfilling flight experience because you can fly with a small three mile an hour gust. <laughs> the Sport Cub S is wonderful, and it's great in a very small environment. In fact, the Sport Cub S here, this is huge for a UMX, an ultra micro. This is not an ultra micro. It is a mini, but only because the regular size is 1.5 meter. Mm -hmm. 
So it's again, another 0.3 meters or 30 centimeters longer. So any other thoughts, camera crew? I'm really excited to have our son fly this because mm -hmm. he's going to love it. Yep. And it's just right his speed. Yep. And I mean, you put this thing in the grass and it's just, you can do no wrong just because it's so slow and it, it doesn't have any stall tendency. I mean, you pretty much can't get the thing to stall, which is, to be honest with you with safe, that's where you run into problems because you have safe and you're like, oh, well, I don't need to fly it. It'll fly it for me. Well, I hate to break it to you, but if you stall, plane's gonna crash. I could crash it, but you should fly it. I'm gonna trick her into flying it. Just wait. Come back for more, guys. Oh, don't forget to stick around. We're gonna do the unbox and build. In this case, radio setup is not much because we just pretty much turned it on. But uh, if you're curious, you're thinking about buying one, watch the rest, you might enjoy it. If you don't watch the rest, just go buy it right now. Just forget, forget watching the rest. Just buy it right now, it's in the link. You'll help support the channel. Thanks for coming back, guys. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips again. It's been like 30 seconds, so we figured you couldn't do without another giant unboxing. You may have heard grumblings about this from myself and others, but people have been asking, and when you ask, I do things. We are gonna unbox something amazing today. Something that you may have seen before, but you've not seen it from me. That box is huge. This is supposed to be mini? I know. I think the box is bigger than the regular Apprentice. Why did I choose to do this on top of the counter? Okay, so this is the Hobby Zone, Horizon Hobby. Hobby Zone Mini Apprentice S, which stands for safe. This plane is a great, great option if you're learning to fly or you would like to learn to fly. It is almost as good as the Sport Cub S in many ways, and it's much better than the Sport Cub S in many ways. One, you can fly this when it's not dead calm. Two, it is bigger, which means it's inherently going to be more stable. And three, it's bigger, so it's easier to see. Drawbacks, before we even dive in, drawbacks are that it's bigger, you need more room to fly, and you're more capable of like damaging stuff. But again, you can damage stuff with any size plane, just ask my neighbors and family. So anyway, uh, without further ado, if you're learning to fly or you wanna to learn to fly, this is a great choice and we are gonna demonstrate just how great of a choice it is by opening the box. You may be seeing the maiden flight first and then you'll be seeing the unbox and set up second. This is a ready to fly, ready to fly. This also comes in a bind and fly, which means that you would just bind it to your already purchased radio system. So this comes with the stuff you see there. The reason that's such a big deal is if you don't have anything, you can start from scratch and literally have nothing. It's coming. Can you warn me which way it's packaged? Okay. Now that I got it started, I should be able to yank it out of there. Oh, I can't tell which way is up. Okay, I picked wrong. <laughs> Stuff did come out. Okay, so a little bit strange here. You need to open it with the back of the box going upright. I don't know if that's like a normal thing. For those of you that live in cars, this car charger will be perfect. <laughs> but it also comes with, it also comes with a wall adapter that gives you This is 100, 100 through 240 volts input, and the output is 13.5 volts at 2230 milliamp hours, which is here too, okay? So what that means is 
When charging the provided LiPo, it's right here. It comes with an E-Flight 3S 1300 20C pack. This is called an EC3 connector. That's your discharge lead, and this is your balance charge lead. So this is one cell, two cells, and three cells in series. So that's why it's called a 3S. 3S, not 3C, because there's C is used to designate the charge rate, or also known as the discharge rate. So when you're looking for, oh boy, here it comes, here it comes. All right, so the other thing too, real quick, I'm just gonna make mention of this. It's not gonna be a major issue. These floats are optional, okay? Those are the same floats that they used on the uh, Hobby Zone Sport Cub, right? Or was that the, was that the Sport Cub? Mm, I think so. Had a brushed motor, head safe at the end. This has a brushless motor. This so is brushless. This plus. Huge plus. Brushless motors are more efficient. They last a lot longer. There's no brushes to fail, uh, which kind of stands to reason since it's brushless. Something the Chinese planes don't come with. Okay, this is made in China, just like all the rest of them, but it's marketed here in North America. So they're gonna send you your double A's. And the funny thing is, okay, so every double A package that I get from Horizon Hobby, any of the Horizon brands, I get them and there's some like random Chinese name, but they never leak in my radios, which is so weird. I don't know if that's just pure luck, but the stuff that I get from Menards for like, nothing, you know, $10 for a thousand batteries. Those things always leak and it's really annoying. So I'm just gonna untape stuff. Looks like, as usual, it's very well packed. Horizon does better than most in the industry. Okay, so this is a DXE. Okay, so you'll see it's got, this is your elevator. This will be your ailerons in mode two. This is your throttle, so it's not spring-loaded. And then this is your rudder, which is spring-loaded. You got trim, 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 trim. And then you have three modes here, one, two, three. And then you have motor, throttle. Oh, arm and disarm, so that's a throttle cut. That's really cool. And then you have high and low rates. And then this antenna, uh, I don't know if that moves. Okay, so at one point it might have moved. Maybe they changed the design. But either way, that takes your, your double A's. In fact, let's just go ahead and put those in as we go. Okay, so if you don't know how to put these double A's in, there's a flat side and a bump side. The flat side goes against the spring and the bump side goes against the bump. It's labeled here minus and plus. So it's pretty straightforward stuff. If you've ever put batteries in anything, you'll be able to do this without any problems. In fact, you know, while we're talking about it, why don't we plug this thing into the wall? So this is gonna plug into the wall. This is gonna plug into that thing, which is super nice actually. I got all sorts of fun projects I wanna do with that. And then you'll notice that the, to charge this thing, you plug it into this plug here. This is called a Hextronics 3S balance lead. Like that. Okay, so we'll just plug into the regular outlet and see if there's any conditions from lights and things. There's like a red light on it. I just don't know if the red light comes on when it's charging or if it takes a second. I'm gonna grab a voltage tester, also known as an XBC 100. Red flashing charging. Oh, good. Red solid charge complete. It started. So, now it's so just so you know what it comes out of the box like, we'll just use this. You can buy this too. This is an awesome tool, but you don't have to have that to do this. So it comes in a 3.91%. Now watch this. This is kind of cool. Check this out. That's an IC3 connector because it's got one extra pin on it, but this is, this is not a smart pack, so it's got an EC3. So it's 11.81 volts total. And then on each of the cells, this is gonna tell you what each of the cells are. So you can see that there. Okay, so while that's 
This is going to charge. So that's going to flash. So under normal circumstances, you would charge that there. In my case, I'm going to charge it on a better charger because I have them and we're always working up against the wire on timing. So let's show them on the S2100. So once this thing's plugged in, this is a, this is not a smart pack. Ooh. So we're going to go ahead and plug this in to the balance lead. And then we're going to plug this in. And you have to do both. You want to show them what the screen looks like. You press one and it'll bring that up. Ooh, sorry about the glare. So we have to set this to whatever charge rate we want. This is 1300 milliamps. So I'm going to scroll up to 1.3 amps. Milliamp means thousandth of an amp. So it's going to charge at 1C. Show them the pack here. It's going to charge at 1C. Okay, so 1C or one times the full discharge rate. LiPo safety is a big part of the hobby right now because LiPos have some inherent risk. There's two big risks in the hobby. Um, one, in, and I'm serious about this, there's two risks. One is having a LiPo catch on fire and two is getting cut by a propeller. If you can avoid those two things, generally speaking, what's the worst that would happen? You run into your kid, your kid's gonna get out of the way. I'm serious, guys. I've crashed into lots of people and things. Nobody's ever been injured, like beyond just little bumps, bruises. You know, I'm, I'm serious. I'm talking thousands of flight hours logged. Your number one primary concern is coming home from the hospital with 30 stitches on your hand. So be very careful. When available, use throttle cut. I use throttle cut all the time in my big expensive radio system. I will use throttle cut on this thing. Throttle cut stops your throttle from being active until you're prepared to fly and then you can turn it off. Okay. So the second thing is lipos. Just be careful. Monitor them when they're charging. If they get hot, if they get real puffy, um, you'll know it's not right because it's gonna look like it's about twice its size. The first thing you'll do is unplug. If you're not sure, if you don't have a good non-flammable surface, find one like in the garage, away from your gas cans and charge them there until you feel totally comfortable with the equipment. Make sure the equipment is working. But generally speaking, you just need to be careful because if you don't have a plan in place and something goes wrong, you're not gonna know what to do. So we got the fuselage out. Okay, beautiful. It's, it is small. I thought, I thought it was gonna be like way bigger than that based on the size of the box. Cause usually the wing, well, the wing is the biggest thing here. So you can see right here, we got some reinforcements where the rubber bands are gonna hold the wing on. Got the Park Zone branded servos. High quality AR636A. That's a good receiver. This is the one aileron plug, okay? So judging from this, it looks like we've got two open ports potentially. Now, if you sit and look at this, you may notice that it points a little bit to that side, and then you may notice that it points a little bit down. So it's down, and it's a little bit to this angle, okay? The reason that is, is because there's inherent, it wants to pull you that way because of the torque from the motor, and that helps to counter that. Even real planes have that. Sorry, I just hit the mic, guys. So we're going to try to pull this wing out. It's kind of sticky in there. Oh, yeah. That's a good size wing. That's why this thing is a trainer. Look how big the wing is compared to the plane. Yeah. Look how big. This wing is bigger. This is why this is a trainer, guys. Okay? This, this plane is half the size of the fuse, and the wing surface area is probably equal or... I would say one and a half times as much. So that's why this plane will fly slow. And also you'll notice the shape of the wing, the airfoil shape is much bigger. So that's good for training. A bigger airfoil creates more drag and lift. Drag is one of the undesirable effects of a wing or desirable, depending on if you're trying to slow down. Okay, so we got manuals over here. 
And then there's a tail, there's a tail feather down there. These are taped in with masking tape. That's a little bit weird. They did survive. They're totally undamaged. Mm. Didn't like taking that out though. Be gentle. Wow, look at that. That is a pinched foam hinge and they used a decal to reinforce it. If you break the, this is the rudder on the vertical stabilizer. If you break that, you can use clear packing tape or just regular scotch tape or whatever, and you can reattach that and it'll be just fine. Um, the manuals in here, Horizon Hobby, all the brands of Horizon Hobby do a really nice job. Some of the best in the industry on manuals. You'll notice they're quite big. Don't let that scare you because it's in about seven languages, if I recall. I always keep all the manuals, even though I don't generally do a whole lot with them after the first setup. If you lose your manual, they have them. Uh, they're available on horizonhobby.com. Okay, lipo safety. If you want a good snore, read through that. Safety first. So we'll just put that away for now. Teach yourself to fly. We're gonna talk about this. For assistance during takeoff, press and hold the panic button. Oh, there's a panic button on here. Oh, panic button. Panic, okay. So as you're flying, you'll fly with your finger on this trigger here. Panic is like uh, safe on steroids. Okay, so safe is called sensor aided flight envelope. And the way that safe works is when you take off with your plane, normally when you let go of the sticks, the airplane just kind of does whatever it feels like doing. With safe, the receiver that's mounted in here actively knows what is going on with the attitude of the plane and the roll, and so the pitch of the plane, the uh, roll of the plane, and the yaw of the plane, and it helps to correct those things to keep you level. That's what SAFE does, it's auto leveling. AS3X, artificial three axis stabilization, just helps to resist, say you're in a turn and the wind pushes you here. It's gonna resist that impact, so it's gonna keep your wing in that position. So safe, on the other hand, brings you level, okay? So if you're going down and you let go of the sticks, it'll level you. And we'll show you that in flight here in just a few minutes. By the way, look how big this springy main nose gear is. Seems like the firewall is maybe gonna be the first thing to break, because this spring is way stronger than the firewall. But that's okay. I'm all about having a springy landing gear. Same thing with these, real springy. That's gonna be super, super good for a beginner. You can definitely fly this stuff off of grass. Just a simple bushing, they're not gonna roll forever, which is nice. So if you're flying off of pavement, even better, but uh, just keep in mind you need a little bit more room to stop. I'm just gonna stick this in here because I'm sick of flipping this thing back onto its wheels. You just kind of squeeze it like this, slide it in and then let go. And there are some keepers that we have to install in there. So now this kit also comes with float adapters. So you'll wanna keep these. What I do is I don't keep the boxes anymore because if I did, we would have to hide them in our attic when we sold the house in an inaccessible area of the attic. That's good that we know. So this I'm gonna keep with my manual for future use. And then what else do we have in here? We have the tail feathers all the way on the bottom. What's the easiest way to get that out, you suppose? I just slide it. Oh yeah, yeah, there's a control horn. That's kind of, man, that's like really awkward. Okay, so this is carbon fiber. So you'll notice that you can't see it from this side. Ironically enough, you're gonna see the plane from the bottom most of the time, <laughs> especially as a beginner. Just pulling off some masking tape. But yeah, this carbon fiber strip is what gives you your, your strength on there because the foam is very weak in and of itself. This is also very flexible foam, so it's very forgiving, okay? So as you can see, it's not breaking, it's not bending. Just that little bit there, okay? All right, so that's gonna go there. We're gonna look at the instruction manual. Um, if you give us just a second, we'll get things picked up and come right back. Okay, so we're gonna set this DXE up in just a little bit, but just so you know, if you get the bind and fly version, I'm using a DX18, which just so you know, if you get into this hobby, 
then I just want to show you something really quick, okay? So this DX18 is programmable, and we have this set for that Boeing, but we also have it set for system setup, yes, model select. I have 78 other planes in here, okay? Just to let you know. How many can you have? As much as your memory. I think I got a one gigabyte SD card in here, so you can have hundreds, if not more. Yeah, so, but just to give you an idea of size, it's only just proportionally bigger, okay? This has an antenna in the handle. I don't know if this one has an antenna in the holder, in the, in the handle, but I know mine has an antenna here for diversity. So it's like one this way and one that way. I just wanted to show you guys that so you know what to look forward to. If you get into this hobby, uh, there is a lot to learn and we are here to help you. So the first thing you're gonna need is the manual. So you're gonna just open this manual up. This is gonna be a relatively easy setup. So it's ready to fly. So it talks about the size, the weight, okay? Know before you fly, Regist register my UAS.FAA.gov. UAS stands for Unmanned Aerial System. Okay, follow whatever rules you wanna follow. Do it legal. The federal government thinks that playing with toys is a big deal now. So in order to bind this thing, there's a bind plug. But I didn't even see a bind plug. Oh, good, there it is. So there's a bind plug. So this is what you use. You plug it into the receiver, which is right here. And the bind plug is, of course, on the bottom. Or did they give us a little jumper? Ooh, they gave us a jumper. That's nice. So when you open this battery, Good lordy. Oh, man, that was horrible. Oh, it comes off. See, they got a bind plug down here for you. That's super nice. And then there's your EC3 connector. But of course, we got to build the plane before we get to that point. Um, just kind of scrolling through the manual. It says English here. So just, you remember I was telling you all the different languages? It goes all the way through in English, then it goes to Dutch, then it goes to French. So it's not all English. This talks about SAFE, sensor aided flight envelope. The basis of SAFE is AS3X, in case you're wondering. High and low rates just mean the amount, like high rates means it moves the control surfaces further, and low means it moves them less. New pilots tend to over control planes, so you wanna usually fly on low rates to help you a little bit. And flight envelope, flight envelope speaks to the amount that a plane, the way that it flies and the orientations that it can be within. So that was kind of a weird thing when I got into this. So wing installation is super simple. This is an important one because you're gonna wanna pay attention to where the control arms and horns hook. So this is a control arm and then that's a control horn, okay? So the horn, ooh, and by the way, work your surfaces a little bit. Same thing, this is a tape reinforced um, foam hinge. Sometimes there's actually small hinges that are molded inside of those. Okay, so this is the instruction manual, it shows, looks like there's a couple of clips up here that go into this hole. That's just for future float installation. So those clips would be retained. If you want to save a couple of grams of weight, you can actually just not install those. And I think I'm just going to install them because I don't want to have to search for them. Although I'm going to have to search for the... So those go there. They are labeled. They have a little R and a little L. See the L? Okay, so that goes like that. Really simple. And then you just, they're all the same screws, so it's a super easy one. So basically, we're going to take a number two Phillips screwdriver. And if you don't know what that means, this is a number two Phillips screwdriver. You can tell because it says P2 in this case. This is on a Craftsman screwdriver. This is just one of these free ones you get in a Chinese airplane kit. And I've got millions of these things. And when I say millions, I'm only minor, only a small exaggeration. So that fits pretty good with the Chinese screwdriver. I'll try the number two next. Seems like the number two would be better. Ooh, you'd need a number one. So we're gonna use this Chinese screwdriver. 
See how it's hard to get those screwed in? I've run into this problem before because sometimes the plastic is a little bit hard to get driven into the first time. So we'll pause and get a drill. Okay, so that says P1, as in Phillips number one. It's a little bit smaller tip, okay? And yes, I'm using an impact, but only because I'm gonna be really super careful. <laughs> I just don't wanna spend a bunch of time putting these screws in, guys. You gotta be real careful. I'm putting very light pressure because the screwdriver is stronger than the plastic. I would recommend using a hand screwdriver and take your time and enjoy it. Isn't that what I usually do, Megan? I mean, camera crew. So for them, I, you guys on the channel, I know this is gonna be a lingering question. Some of you are thinking, Brian, seriously, you're flying all these like super advanced planes. And then I say that somewhat facetiously, but still, um, as you can see, that goes in just fine with those two tabs. My camera crew off camera was asking if that was gonna get in the way, it does not. Um, so why are you flying this thing, Brian? It seems to me like you should be beyond this. Well, of course I am. But the thing is, I love teaching people to fly and I also love easy flying planes because there's something fun about just throwing it up there and not giving any care and having a good experience. I'm intentionally letting that slip. I'm not pushing hard enough to strip the screws. Okay, these ones are especially a pain because they have to they have to kind of wrap and mold that plastic down. And you technically don't have to do this step. I mean, you wouldn't have to do this. Then your landing gear would just be more likely to come undone. But really, between you and me, it's not, not a big deal. You might find that it helps to save your landing gear. <laughs> I've done it both ways, guys. Did I put those in the wrong? No, I didn't. They're just kind of have to get pulled down funny. Now, again, I have never, I would never encourage you guys to do this with a drill, except that it worked really nice. Except for that one corner, but that's fine. I don't care. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's fine. These things are spring loaded and you're forcing the springs in. It's actually pretty hard to turn them in. So that worked nice. Um, so the next thing, of course, is to put on the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer. This one goes through these holes here, real simple, just like that, okay? And this stuff is all pretty self-explanatory. If you haven't built this before and you just need a little bit of help walking through, this is exactly why we do the videos. We're not doing this for you know, the people that are, have been on the channel for five years and know everything about all the planes that I've flown and all the different things that we've talked about. Okay, so let's show them this. This is a clevis is what I like to call this. And this rubber thing is a fuel tube or a gas tube. They suggest on the elevator to put it in the, well, it's already installed on the control horn. Now I just need to do this side. Okay, so that's the control horn for the elevator. Yep, see how that's kind of wiggling? And they want it on the all the way outside hole. I'm gonna go for a little bit more because I kind of know what's going on. Well, you know what? We'll do it exactly per the manual and just see how it does. And then maybe if our, if our oldest son wants to fly it, then he can try it. The further in you go, or down in this case, the more output you're gonna get here. So you're gonna have more control authority on the elevator, which is your pitch axis. So if it goes up or if it goes down, and to do loops and things like this, all those things will be controlled there. We gotta put some screws in the bottom too, don't let me forget, camera crew. Okay, so there's also an adjustment here. I just wanna show you this. This is how you mechanically trim. You just turn these in. I'm actually just gonna put it back though. You can turn them in, you can turn them out, and they're threaded. Very, very fine thread on those too, by the way. So that's good, you want that. So the rudder is going, 
The rudder has a linkage that goes up to the steerable nose gear and a linkage that goes out to the rudder itself. So there's actually two things attached to the control arm, but then the control horn here is supposed to be plugged into the furthest outside one. So just take your fingernails and pull those opened and slip it in. So when I talk about mechanical trimming, you'll understand what I mean when I say mechanically trimming these things to be you know, straight or suppose the plane takes off and it wants to kind of fly a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right or a little bit up and a little bit down and you're having to fight it constantly. Well, you can trim it on the radio, but then when you land, you'll want to get it mechanically adjusted so that it's neutral. And that way, when you take off the next time, you have the full amount of trim because there's only so much trim up and down and then you run out. Okay. It will make better sense when you fly it. Okay, so then we got four screws here, which means we gotta flip this over and get these two screws attached. Usually I'll take and support the bottom of the plane with a blanket or something, but in this case, this one's so resilient to damage, you just don't need to worry about it. I can just hold it. And this honestly is super similar to building a lot of the more complicated planes that we've reviewed on this channel. It just happens to be different plane. The best planes are screwed together in terms of buying and flying, in my opinion. I love the fact that you can be in the air in just a few minutes, really. And it'll feel like you're turning forever. Probably because I am. Okay, then one more screw. I just want to make sure I'm actually getting it in there. Actually, I think I did. I'm just going to balance it on the spinner and try this. Hmm, it's going. I can feel it compressing the foam. I just have a hard time believing this one. This one must have missed the hole. Let's let this one pop out. Yeah, so there it is. So I must have missed the hole, guys. It's always awkward. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have that thing. Oh yeah, there we go. I'm getting purchased now. You can tell because if there's no resistance, you're not getting it. Am I? They give you spares. Horizon does most of the time. Hobby Zone, Horizon Hobby, E Flight. They're all under the mothership of Horizon Hobby, which is a very big company. I don't understand this one. It's like I'm not lined up. Let's double check what I'm, what I'm doing here. I feel like that's not correct, or I didn't get it right. That's one thing that's a little bit annoying too with planes, you guys will figure out if you get into this hobby much, is that there's some times when you're putting things together and you just literally cannot see because every aspect of it is hidden by the time you're actually getting the, the screw in the hole. And since there's only two screws holding this on, I kind of want to make sure it's right. See, I can tell it's not screwed in. Show them that other angle. See that? Yeah. So I'm just trying to back it out. Oh, wait. What? It's just a weird angle. Oh, what the heck? The screw, the screw isn't even in there. Did it already fall out? Oh, right here. Goodness gracious, no wonder I couldn't get it. Sorry, folks. So you can see where that little linkage is going through. Mm -hmm. That little nut zert, whatever you want to call it, that plastic thing. And I've got it squished down to where it should be aligned. I'm just going to try again. I thought for sure I had it that time. Oh yeah. 
I feel it pulling it in this time. Yeah, it's pulling it in. Got it, okay. Sorry folks. See how that looks really sharp. The Apprentice is a pretty plane. Now tricycle landing gear, one thing you're gonna watch out for is when you're landing and taking off, you can tip them like this. But see, the wing is so long on this plane that when that happens, you've got a wing to kind of help you a little bit. But you don't want your prop to hit the ground because then you might break it, okay? They are not indestructible. By the way, we were reading in the manual it says, do not use the prop that comes with it when you fly off of the floats. There is a different prop that's a little bit less aggressively pitched or a little bit more aggressively pitched. I don't know because I've never actually gotten them, so. It's in the manual though. It is in the manual. So if you, so if you get the floats, definitely take a look at that. Um, we have two extra screws here, so it's possible that we'll need those later. And so for now, I'm just going to set those aside so that I don't have to find out later that we needed them. Okay. That's always a good idea to keep that stuff. And then there's some extra fuel tube that's cut. And we're going to probably need this mine plug in just a few seconds. So we'll have this ready to go. You just plug that in to bind the radio to the, the transmitter to the receiver. Okay, so there's an aileron cord that's called a Y cable. And see there's actually two cables that come out of one port on the receiver. And this is called a Y cable because it looks like a Y. Okay, so those are going to plug in here. Is that the next step? Yeah, it doesn't matter which one you plug into which. Um, it doesn't make any difference because these two servos are actually running the same direction, okay? Because when you run ailerons, one goes down and one goes up. So if this was down, that would lift the wing here. And this, if this was up, then it would push it down. So they work together to roll the plane or to roll the plane. When they work at the same time, both down, that's called flapperons because the ailerons are acting as flaps and spoilerons would go up. Spoilers go up and they spoil lift. Ailerons also do the same thing, but they do them opposite on one side from the other. All right. So basically color for color, there's a brown, orange, and yellow or orange, red, and brown. And I'm just gonna get the first one here, verify my, the polarity. And you see how the colors are lined up there? Then just stick these together. They're a little bit hard to get together with one left hand. If I would have been smarter about the way I did this, I would get it so my right hand was doing that because I am right-handed. Or if you're ambidextrous, you'd have an easier time than I did. Okay, that was really stiff connection. Okay, brown is at the top, brown is at the top. And when you're done with that, you just kind of tuck this into this area so that it's away from all the happenings there, okay? And they have a bind plug on the bottom for us so we don't need to get in there again. It is very nice. So rubber bands, these are pretty good rubber bands too, guys. If you have ever, you know, if you go to your office supply store and you get a rubber band, they're not gonna be that thick. So. Just a heads up, and the other thing too is after about six or seven years of sitting around, which is inevitably what happens with these planes is you'll, you'll get one and you'll play with it a bunch, and then you'll put it away, and then like six or seven years later, you'll be like, I wanna fly that thing. The rubber bands are gonna be dry and crispy, so you'll wanna make sure you have a bag and talc, you know, just like baby powder or whatever, will help to keep them fresh for a really long time. I don't know why, I think moisture helps to accelerate the deterioration of the rubber. Is that what it is? So I usually do an X and then I do a straight. And you could do it in either order, but I prefer to do it this way. So you just kind of overstretch it. And then I use my second finger to get it around. You see how they're nice and flat? That's, that's helpful because it'll look better. And then secondly, that's helpful because 
it'll be more aerodynamic because you'll create a little bit less drag by doing that. The other thing that's nice about having a rubber band mounted wing is that when it's a rubber band mounted wing, if something goes wrong, it's allowed to slip a little bit, okay? Little piece of foam there from the packaging. That is really cool, I'm excited. What do you think for size? So I am six foot tall. This is a 1.2 meter plane. So you can see it comes up to my, just under my chest here, mid torso. And it's a lot shorter than it is wide, which is true of many trainers, okay? So that's great, this thing is gonna fly awesome. And if you're wondering what the pitch of the prop is, this is an 8.25 by 5.5, which means that it's 8.25 measured end to end inches by 5.5 inches of pitch. Okay, so upon one revolution, it's gonna move 5.5 inches. So if it was a 3.5 inch pitch, then it would move 3.5 inches. So it's the higher that second number, the more aggressive it's shaped, okay? So if that was a 10, like an 8.5 10, the 10 would be super steep, it'd be almost flat, okay? Because it would have to move way far in one rotation. Does that make sense? Notwithstanding other impacts like drag and gravity and all these things. Okay, so low voltage cutoff, it showed up on the page, so I'll talk about it. If when flying, all of a sudden, the motor starts like oscillating, like no power, no power, no power, no power, no power. That means you get a low voltage warning. It's a low voltage cutoff, okay? Um, this is called the center of gravity. So center of gravity is 75 millimeters back or 2.95 inches back from the leading edge of the wing. Good luck measuring 2.95 inches. So you pretty much have to measure with a measuring tape um, in millimeters. And I'll show you the way I do it. It's very easy. Now, this is Two, this is 75 millimeters. Okay, so if you, have, if you have millimeters, that's great. But this is gonna be like one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters. Okay, so you wanna go 75. There's 75. So that's square from the leading edge, straight back, 75. So I'm just lining this up by sight. I'm gonna make a dot, okay? Then I'm gonna just line this up by sight. I'm gonna make a dot, okay? So you can see my little dot here. I'm just gonna make a bump. I'm just gonna make a little bump. Sometimes I do it with hot glue so that it's actually a little easier. Um, but since this plane, this plane has a wing spar in here and it's probably right at 75 millimeters. So let's double check. So a spar is just a strengthening device. Oh wow, look at that. You know what, for all intents and purposes, that's close enough. You see, we're just beyond, we're about 77. So we're just in front of that spar. That's good enough for me. This plane is going to be somewhat CG independent. It's gonna be CG uh, forgiving. Let's put it that way. Most of the trainers are gonna end up being very forgiving in that way. So we have extra rubber bands too. Came with two full sets, which is great. So we'll keep those for later. And then let's check the status of the charge on this battery. And we can pretty much go fly this thing which is what's so cool about this, guys. If you get one of these planes, so we've currently charged 428 milliamp hours into this pack. It's a 1300 milliamp hour pack. You can see that the charge is at 4.2 on each of those cells. Give them a close up of that. And so I can scroll through some more. This shows the internal resistance, which that's a pretty big deal. Look at the difference, that's bad. And then it shows the watt hours. This is stuff you don't necessarily need to know. I'm gonna stop it, we'll unplug this, and then we'll unplug the battery. Um, one little trick, trick of the day, trick of the day, guys. If you have a non-smart pack without telemetry, there is, there is telemetry on here, but you have to have a telemetry ready receiver. So this is just a little cheap doohickey you can get, and you can set this to alarm at certain points. You don't have to worry about this because this is a ready to fly plane. This will tell you your voltage counts, for each of the cells, these things are cheap. They're like six, seven, eight bucks, something like that. So if you don't have one and you want a quick and, and easy way to keep your voltage, you listen, when you hear the alarm, you land. When the alarm goes off, if you chop your throttle, you get a little bit more long, longer flight. 
enough time to get back to the ground unless you're talking about an EDF, electric ducted fan, in which case you're probably too late then. And you can set that alarm to different levels. So if you wanna give yourself more warning. So in order to start this plane, we have to bind it. So we've, we've checked the CG, we know where it is, we need to have the sticks down. So on a mode two, throttle's over here. On a mode one, it's over here. So we're just, for the sake of the video, we're gonna be talking as though we're on a mode two, okay? So if you have mode one, which is what they use over in Europe, it's a little bit different because it's over on this side, okay? Just assume that you're on mode two if you're in the United States. Okay, so it's very important that you get this plane. Keep immobile and out of wind for five seconds. So basically the big thing is, first of all, you wanna make sure you protect yourself from the prop. And second of all, you need to have it level. And third of all, you wanna make sure it's secured. So especially on the first go around to make sure there's not gonna be a problem, okay? There won't be a problem, but if there's a problem, you wanna have control of the plane. It's your responsibility. So speaking of your responsibility, I'm gonna clean this junk up. Did you pause? You did not pause? Camera crew did not pause. Sorry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get ready to bind this thing and it's gonna be basically a, a few seconds. I don't like the way that falls off. You know what, we're just gonna modify this already. It's only been 10 seconds. So I don't like that thing falling off. It's annoying. Because the hinge probably costs more than the door. So I'm gonna show you the trick of the day. First of all, I'm gonna use this tape. This is gonna be really simple. I'm gonna put this on like that. And then I'm gonna stick the tape just like this. Simple as that. And now we have a hinge door. And I'm gonna do one more piece of tape because I don't wanna fight this thing every time I use it. And this tape is going to go lengthwise like this. It's gonna double back. It's always fun to film clear tape, isn't it, camera crew? See this? So now I can lift that. So that was 10 seconds worth of work. And if you guys do that, you'll be happy. You'll have no more problems in life. Yeah. See how that works? Super easy. Keep it simple. You'll enjoy it. Okay, so now we need to bind this plane. So the binding procedure is listed in the manual still. Goodness gracious, what are all these? Oh, this is talking about the flight controls. This teaches you kind of what you need to do. Range test. Yeah, pretty sure people aren't gonna do range tests if this is their first time flying. You do wanna fly into the wind. So that's very important. When you're, when you're landing, you fly into the wind, okay? You can fly with the wind, but just keep in mind that optional transmitter setup. Ooh, look at this. So this tells you how to set up the other transmitters if you have them, okay? So this is the normal, this is a little bit more in depth. See, mine's a DX18. So this tells you how to set up the different features if you already have your own. Yep, if you're doing a bind and fly setup. So, also we need to get the sticker ready too. So, I think what we're gonna do is, there's the range test. You have to flip this switch one, two, three, four times. And 28 meters or 90 feet away is what they want you to do. So what a range test does, is it, it lowers the range, the power on the radio frequency output by one tenth. So it, it, it reduces it to one tenth of the normal output. And then you can see if it still controls it. So, that, so whatever you're testing, you wanna assume that's how far you're gonna be flying. So if you go 28 meters, 90 feet, then that would assume that you could go 900 feet away from you, which is really far, like you'd barely be able to see this thing. Um, you don't want to fly away. Flyaways are not good, but generally they don't fly away very good because eventually they run out of battery. The other thing is this has safe. So if you're in safe and it flies away, then it's just going to keep doing it. Okay. So binding, that was the, I was just making sure we covered all our bases there. 
binding. Okay, so binding procedure reference table. Make sure the transmitter is powered off. It is. Make sure the transmitter controls are neutral. Actually, is this powered on? Okay, it does power on. When that little light's on, that's the radio frequency. Install the bind plug into the bind jumper, which is here. Okay, so we're gonna plug this in. Now what this does is this shorts ground to uh, signal. In case you're wondering, there's only two wires. That's red and black, but it's not power and ground. It's actually ground and signal. So that's plugged in and ready to go. The included ready to fly transmitter should be bound to the aircraft at the factory. Oh, well, in that case, you don't have to bind it. So never mind, I'm not gonna bind it. But if I was gonna bind this to my DX18, which I'll probably do after we're done flying this a little bit, then we can try that. So we just need to put the battery in here. Let's show the people how we do that. Sorry about that, guys. I thought we'd have to bind it. Okay, so this is a little strap. It's a Velcro strap. It's gonna be frustrating because it's weak, but it's gonna do the job, okay? The door, you know, you can, you can depend on it if you want, but I would highly recommend depending on the strap because if the door fails, then, you know, and after a few rough landings, you're gonna find out the door may also pop out. That's why we taped it additionally. So I wanna pull this until it tightens up a little bit and you'll see it's working glorious, gloriously, glor gloriously. Gloriously. Thank you, camera crew. And when I say gloriously, I mean it's working horribly. This is like my least favorite type of strap from Horizon. They have a couple of different echelons of strap and this one's one of the lower quality ones because it'll rip if you pull too hard. Like I'm probably gonna, yeah. I'm gonna just end up ungluing something if I'm not careful. So in this case, we're just gonna put it in here and do our best. Can you tuck that bind plug under now? Um, I kind of want it out because I'm probably gonna be binding my, um, my DX18. Now you don't have to feed it through there too. That's the other thing. You can just like wrap this around the battery and then just push this onto there, but it just works poorly. A pain. Yes. You'll find that out real quick when you get into this hobby. And every new plane is a different learning curve of how to do that battery. Yeah. And that's part of the reason why it's annoying when you're just doing a video for... Okay, so you see this is allowed to slide forward and backward. That's not really ideal, but I'm gonna just check the CG, the center of gravity. See, it's still kind of leaning toward the back. So you kind of want that battery to push forward a little bit more. So that's all the way forward. That's pretty well centered. So you need that battery all the way forward, guys, which actually is kind of nice. That'll make it easier. So push it all the way forward. Do yourself a favor and do that. This plane will be CG. It's, it's not gonna care. It's gonna fly either way, but it's gonna fly better if you get the CG right. So you have to flip this over within five seconds, right? Sorry. So I'm gonna lay that down like that. Okay, this transmitter is going to be on in this case and the throttle cut is gonna be on the on condition. And I'm gonna do this in a safe way so that if this prop come alive, it's not gonna cut me. I am controlling it with my hands. Okay. I've got control of the plane. I'm just gonna let it sit. Okay. So that's the arming noise from the brushless motor. That's the dance for the startup sequence. And when everything comes alive and it's holding still, now, before you play with it, make sure that your throttle's not working. Good, it's not working. So now I can flip this back over. You notice it's attempting to right the plane. I'll show you what that does. I just shut it off so I could get in here and plug this battery in. These batteries, these ECs are extremely difficult to plug in. Okay, you see how that's not even seated all the way? Oh, good lordy lord. Did you see that? Yeah, it's crazy. <sighs> and you've shook my hand before. I have, unfortunately. Okay. So now, when you're flying this thing, it's gonna be like this. Elevator makes that thing go up, makes that thing go down. That's what controls your pitch. This is gonna put that aileron down and that aileron up. 
That's going to roll the plane. That's going to roll the plane. Just imagine you're sitting in the, in the, in the cockpit on your, you've got your little joystick here. That's just the way it would be. Okay. Then this is like the pedals. So this rudders makes your plane go this way, makes your plane go that way. And then of course this will be throttle and the throttle cut is engaged. So I'm going to hold the plane. I'm going to shut the throttle cut off. I'm going to lift it up a little bit to keep the prop away from the countertop. Full throttle. And then if you have full throttle and the throttle cut comes on, it's going to stop it. So always be careful to make sure that the stick is down before you start flying and stuff. Okay. All right. So throttle cuts on and tested. We're in experienced mode right now. So all the way back towards you is experienced and all the way out is learning or safe or inexperienced. This is how you can tell if you're in experienced mode or not. You see the ailerons. It's going to try to find level, put it on its back. It's going to try to find the quickest route to level. That's quicker. That's quicker. The other thing is look at the elevator. You see how it's pointed that way. See how it levels out. It found level. Now it's trying to bring you level. So those two control axes are going to work together to bring you level. Now look at the rudder as I swing the plane, you see how it moves to that side and then moves to that side. Can you tell here, you film here, film from this. See how it moves and moves. That's the way AS three X works. And in this, could you see it? It's hard to see, but I can see it. <laughs> you can't see it. Yet. You can't see it. It's no. too fast. Can you try harder? Cause I want the people to see, see now safe is also using the yaw control to try to find the fastest route to level. That's auto leveling. Now, if you go to intermediate mode, it's just going to limit your bank angles. Okay. So in, in, in the basic mode, the easiest mode to fly, you're also going to be limited to go so far. Okay. So you're never going to be able to pitch a plane more than this or this or that. Okay. So you can't roll it over on accident, but you can stall it, meaning you run out of flight power and you like fall. Okay. I'll demonstrate these for you right now. So when I said right now, I meant at the beginning of the video. So if you're still watching this, you get a gold star. Thanks for watching guys. Come back for more. You've already seen the flight. This is a great beginner plane. You'll see from the flight, you already have made up your own mind. Putting it together is not hard. You barely need an unbox. You barely need a build video. This is a, this is a really well built, simple plane. It's got all the features you need to learn to fly. The tricycle landing gear are just really fun and you'll love it. So, Hope you enjoyed it. Come back for more.